Okay, what do you think us stupid humans understand about weight? Well, here's a candle, weighs four ounces. Here's a, God, a magnet that basically weighs four ounces. Uh-huh, you sure about that? What is weight? If we're going to solve the problem of gravity, or overcoming that, we first had to understand field coherency, and I already discussed field coherency and incommensurability. In a prior video, where I actually show this actually has, on any incoherent mass, it's able to actually induce field coherency in the secondary object, has 60 pounds of weight. It's able to, against 1g of gravity, accelerate 60 pounds against 1g. This, however, no matter what you put it against, is 4 ounces. Both of these are 4 ounces. Okay. That's acceleration. Do you think that gravity is something autonomous? Like an autonomous field modality? Dielectricity, electricity, magnetism? Gravity? No, it's not. Gravity is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. Incoherent dielectric acceleration. Those are not two tough words. Everybody keeps saying, make the videos simpler, dumb them down. It's like, well, pretty sure that I have dumbed them down <laughs> to the most radical point possible. I keep thinking, how could I dumb them down a little further? You know, I've already dumbed them down enough. Okay, so what is weight? Well, you know, you stand on a scale, you weigh 150 pounds or whatever it is you weigh. Certainly not in my case, I weigh a lot more than 150 pounds, right? What is weight? Weight relative to what? This is able to accelerate 60 pounds. This is only able to accelerate 4 ounces. Obviously, this does not work on dirt the same way because it's not able to induce field coherency in the dirt. You know, you drop it, it weighs 4 ounces on the dirt, right? Sure does, absolutely. This is only able to accelerate about 15 pounds. It's able to induce coherency in another object, like another magnet or another piece of metal. Ferrous metal, right? This is also why uh, stars die when they produce enough iron. Ferrous, iron, because what happens is, is a field coherency starts up and then the ability of a star to work no longer ceases. They either explode or if they're supermassive, they implode on themselves. Enough iron, you end up with field coherency, geomagnetic precession, and then the object disappears from the universe, or it destroys itself in a large explosion. That's a matter for another discussion. What is weight? Weight is location-specific, medium-specific, vector-specific, magnitude-specific, and phase-specific, and two other things that would be quite complicated to get into. What are we talking about? Weight is location-specific. Well, okay, Let's see if this is... The Earth right here, and I'm going to draw the United States and Russia and Europe, okay. You're out here, you weigh what? On the Earth, you weigh 150 pounds, okay, you're 150 here. Let's see, here are X number of miles out here from the Earth, and you weigh 50 pounds, right? 150, 50 pounds? Location specific. Now the amazing thing, now the way they got around this, like the idiots in quantum mechanics, is what they, they reified space as something that has properties that acts on other things. Why did the idiots of quantum mechanics reify space? The reason they reified space is they knew that instant, instantaneous action at a distance was absolutely the case. They even called it spooky, they couldn't understand it. Okay, over here we have the huge sun, right? Obviously it's not that close to the earth, right? Sun, okay? Now, about eight minutes for a light. A light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. But apparently nothing travels faster than the speed of light, eight minutes. If we work off the thought experiment of the disappearing sun, no two things in the universe, only two things, except the sun and the earth. If the sun were immediately to disappear, why would the earth go spinning off out into the void? Well, wow, that fastest thing anything communicate would be eight minutes. So why would the Earth go whew, if the Sun were to immediately vanish? Why would that be the case? That means something is had instantaneous action at a distance. Instantaneous action at a distance cannot be explained with the RBP. You know what that stands for? That is quantum mechanics. RBP. RBP. That's the religion of bumping particles. One-way, two-way particle communication is absolutely impossible to explain instantaneous action at a distance. There have been many experiments. Obviously, you can't duplicate this experiment. Many experiments have proved that instantaneous action at a distance exists. So the religion of bumping particles could never explain that. And so what they did is they reified something which, as Nikola Tesla said, space has no properties. 
Nikola Tesla was right. Space has absolutely no properties. The notion of curved space is an absurd pile of crap. If you think you're smarter than Nikola Tesla, then, you know, you might want to check yourself into a padded room. So weight is location specific, L. It is medium specific, what the hell does that mean? I'll get into a second. Vector specific, magnitude specific, and phase specific, and two other things I'm going to leave unnamed right now because it would take a long damn time. Long damn time. So we have seven things that affect weight. What are we talking about? Medium. Okay. Here we have El Chubbo. I guess that's going to be me. Extra fat guy right here. Uh, 240 some pounds. I might weigh that. <laughs> and now we're going to stick uh, El Chubbo. I got really good drawing skills, don't I? Now we're going to stick El Chubbo in the water. Okay. Medium specific. This is just one analogy, right? El Chubbo in the water. Now, a little girl, a little five-year-old girl has got no chance of pushing El Chubbo if he's like... Let's say he slipped on the ice, right? It's <laughs> no chance. A little five-year-old girl could easily move around. Uh, the fat guy. El Gordo. El Gordo Loco, right? In the water, right? 240 pounds, 240... What's changed? What's changed? I'm pretty sure he's suspended in a different medium where medium or weight has very little meaning still have a mass okay f equals m a right well f m a force equals mass some acceleration we're actually able to get around that we have acceleration equals m1 times m2 over distance squared. We're actually able to get around that if we understand field coherency, as I explained in a prior video. Incommensurability. Yes, actually, we are able to get around that. Vector specific. What's the difference between... Now think about this, okay? Everybody's seen this all throughout their life. What's the difference between this? Okay, are you watching? What's it? Nothing's changed. What's the difference? What's the vector here? Vector. That vector versus... Now, I don't actually have to induce a spin for that to occur. What's the difference between that? This versus... Eh? What's the difference? What's the difference? Vector. If you actually were able to trace out the pattern on this, you would see that it's exactly like the spirograph pattern, the curved linear pattern that exists underneath the ferro cell. This follows exactly magnetic centrifugal divergence and increasing acceleration towards increasing inertia dielectric acceleration centripetal this follows it exactly if you're able to put a tiny pin on the end of this obviously everybody's seen this right twirl the coin right what's that that's a vector everything in the universe is the big e electrical how are we able to change a vector now i've got a couple devices behind me here I've had one person that I've shared the design with. He's verified that it works. I got three prototypes. One of the prototypes is in someone else's hands. Two of the prototypes I own, and I've shared the plans to create the other prototype with one other person. He can feel the effects. Now I have to scale it up. So we know that weight has no meaning because weight is location specific, medium specific. Five year old girl, no chance of moving the fat guy. Five year old girl could easily move the fat guy suspended in a wall. Medium. Vector specific. How do you change the vector of a falling object, for example? How are, you, how are you able to change the vector? Not the vector, only the vector of its acceleration or deceleration from mass 1 to mass 2, is it's not about purely distance. Acceleration is not mass 1 times mass 2 over distance squared, but vector cubed times distance squared over mass 1, mass 2. Let's complete that equation out at some later date, right? Vector. Magnitude. How massive is it? How massive is it? Now here's a secret I'm going to reveal later. I don't reveal it now. I'm going to reveal it in my book because I found a lot of people like to steal my videos and they repost it up like, I'm the one that discovered that. It's like, no, I'm the one that discovered it. Okay. Magnitude. We have mass 1 here, mass 1 here, duplicate. 
and we have mass 2 here, and then we have mass 2. Let's say mass 2 weighs the same weight, relatively speaking, okay? Both mass, one, mass 2 are, are exact same weight, exact same mass, right? Well, mass 2, tiny, mass 2, huge. Okay, everything is geometry too, by the way. Say everything is electrical, well, everything is geometry. Now, notice where the null point of acceleration exists relative to mass 2. Do you see this? This is the null point of mass 2. If I were able to bring these further apart, you notice that the null point is right in the middle of mass 1 and mass 2. Do you see this? Null point, right dead center. Null point is way the hell over here. Since everything is electrical, using retroductive analysis, which is an ancient platonic methodology, and apply that to the fact that everything is the big E, electrical, I'm able to deduce something about building something. Everything else is phase specific. That would take a long time to, <laughs> that would take a long time to describe. A long time to describe. A really long time. Now, as I've already shown you, God, this is, if I can get this right here, I can take a look here. Everything exists at a phase of, which is shaped like an egg, basically, right like this, around a magnet, I place it a little further down, which is where it should be, right, shaped like an egg, okay? This is the actual field of phase shift, it occurs at a ratio of 1, down here is phi, and up here is 1, okay? We're looking at this egg shape right now. You split it right here, this is phi, and this is 1. You're going to like this one. Hold on for a second. You may not like it. I don't know. Let me actually... I think I've run out of paper. Let me just flip over my paper here and use another sheet. Move this stuff out of the way. Okay, let's draw the egg shape of our phase right here. Eh, kind of an egg shape. Since everything is electrical, we're able to change the phase of an object by applying an electrical charge, everything ratio 1 to phi. Now, since everything is electrical, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to end up with a different ratio. And we're going to apply coherency to a phased array over here. Take a look at this egg shape over here. And let's just take a look at this section right here. Apply a phase just to this section, and then we're going to give it a nice little roof. And we end up with a specific geometry that looks like this. If we actually were to just look at this geometry right here. What does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> PCB phase coherent polarization over here. PCP, excuse me. Phase coherent polarization. I said PCB. Phase coherent polarization. We're able to drop the plane of inertia from here down to here and apply alternating phase current polarization towards the rate of acceleration of a given mass, let's say this is the mass right here, okay, here's the mass. We have alternating phase coherent polarization. What we're able to do, we're applying the right hand rule of acceleration to null out weight, because what the hell is weight? Weight and acceleration are one and the same thing. We're able to null that out. What are we able to then do? Zero force is involved in acceleration. Acceleration is the dissipation of force in the curvilinear erasure of motion. Let's say this is the Earth right here, right? Here's our device right here, our device, or our vehicle. Acceleration equals mass 1 times mass 2 times the distance over the distance squared. No, that's only part of the equations. Particles can't be used to model instantaneous action at a distance. Everything is electrical. 
People say weight, that is the, weight is the definition of weight. Weight is the force that a mass M experiences due to the gravity of another mass. Well, that's not true. That's generally true, but a generalization is not a truism, and generalization is not an absolute. We know we're actually able to change the null point from here to here by the simplex geometry of acceleration of mass 1 to mass 2, or mass 1 to mass 2 here. Weight is location-specific, medium-specific, vector-specific, magnitude-specific, phase-specific. It's also coherency-specific. That's a point for another discussion. It'd take a long time to describe. Well, how do you apply phase coherency to an object that's accelerating towards the Earth, for example? Well, it's not that complicated. Well, actually, it is. <laughs> it's complicated to describe. Not so complicated to put into practice. All you have to do is work your way backwards. It's called retroductive thinking. It's a lost science. The last people who used retroductive analysis were the ancient Pythagoreans, Platonists, and Neoplatonists thousands of years ago. So we know that weight is not an absolute. Just take a fat guy in the water, a little five-year-old girl can move her easily, right? We know that weight is location-specific. Here's a Captain Howdy standing on the Earth at 150 pounds, and here he is X number of miles from the Earth. He weighs 50 pounds here, and weighs 150 pounds here. So weight is location-specific. Weight is also vector-specific. Vector. You know, well, if all things are equal, and nothing is ever equal, we're not trying to make everything equal. This is equal. This is acceleration. This is acceleration. Yeah, we don't want everything equal. That's the whole damn point. We want a specific vector. What's the vector of approach? If you're able to apply an electrical charge vector, phase coherent polarization, you're able to apply a charge, because everything, since everything is electrical, then everything works off the right-hand rule. If you don't know what the right-hand rule is, just type in a Google search. Right-hand rule. What is the right-hand We don't want everything to be the same. Well, sure it is. You know, acceleration is mass 1, mass 2, or distance squared. No! That's if everything is equal. And we don't want that. We want something else other than everything being equal. So we have phase, magnitude, vector, medium, and location. We also have coherency and one other thing I'm not going to mention. Because if I mention it, someone else is going to go, I discovered that, I discovered that. I'll leave that for my book. <laughs> if I put it here now, someone's going to go, I discovered that first. I discovered it. Fat boy didn't discover it. Because I've already noticed that's happened many, many, many times already. There's a few uh, knuckleheads out there that are actually saying, that, Oh, I discovered it. You know, he didn't discover that first. Actually, a lot of people have been saying that. Yeah, prove it. You have absolutely no proof. <laughs> Why is somebody else talking about the seven attributes of weight? Location, medium, vector, magnitude, phase, coherency, and one other thing. Kind of important that I'll leave out. That everything is two things. Actually, it's three. Coherency. Coherency polarization. Everything is electrical. And also it's the geometry of acceleration. Electrical, geometry, coherency, and phase. EGCP. Those are the attributes of changing what something weighs. Because weight is not definitive. You can place a single object and weigh it on various places on the Earth. It will weigh, I mean, that's been proven hundreds of times over. Same object taken different places on the Earth, equator, North Pole, South Pole. It weighs different. Weight is not a fixed thing. Sure, it's 1G wherever you go. You know, you weigh the same. No, you don't. No, you don't. And by applying a few other things, and everything is about coherency, we're able to change that. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Thank you for watching so much, and uh, more videos to come. Bye.